Welcome back to Saturday's Sports Special. Jamaica College acting principal Wayne Robinson says there is a clear bias against his school following a recent decision by ISA to throw out an appeal for two of their overseas athletes to be eligible for this year's Boys and Girls Championships. But ISA President Keith Wellington says there is no such bias. Jordan Fort tells us more. We are now convinced that there is an anti-JC sentiment in, in the leadership of ISA. JC Principal Wayne Robinson speaking to TVJ Sports on Saturday. Robinson's statement comes after two of JC's athletes were ruled ineligible to compete at this year's Boys and Girls Championships. The two athletes, long-distance runners Evans Tete and Dominic Mponsa, are from Ghana. Both athletes arrived in Jamaica on October 4, 2023. ISA's rule states that to be eligible to compete in any competition within the same school year, a student must be in school by September 30, the latest. But Jamaica College acting principal Wayne Robinson says there were extenuating circumstances. And so we appealed on, on the grounds that they, 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 are, they are a couple of days late and these are the reasons. We gave them all the information, the, the travel documents, the, the times they went to the airport the first times, all the, why the delays took place um, and, and why they arrived late. And we thought these were circumstances beyond our control and beyond, beyond the boys' control. Robinson thinks their case was strengthened by the fact that Kingston College had a request for a waiver granted for the 2017 ISA Boys and Girls Championships. Then Ugandan athlete Aria Manuel Rogers, who it is understood arrived in the island on October 16 of the previous year, was still allowed to compete. As far as I'm concerned, our athletes were there for in school longer than the, this athlete in particular that you mentioned. So he would have been, if it is arrival and, and how long you've been in school, if it eliminates you because of your, say, the 80% rule, then we are there longer. But ISA president Keith Wellington says context was important in ISA's decision. Um, the circumstances around the situation then is, I think, significantly different from now. Right now we are facing an influx of athletes and I, I, I want to differentiate between students and athletes because in, in these cases we have stu athletes coming in to to. to to, to participate in our competitions. These are not necessarily students in the first instance, but significantly these are um, athletes being recruited. JC's initial request for the waiver was reviewed by the same ISA executive, which also reviewed the appeal and decided to uphold the decision. So what about the issue of natural justice? In this case, this is not a disciplinary matter. This is a matter where the organization is being asked to waive its rules. So there is no need, or the, there is no need, and I don't think it would be appropriate for an independent body to adjudicate on uh, um, on the body itself changing its rules to facilitate a situation. So there is no independent body that is required to rule on this because I don't think anybody is in doubt as to whether or not the rule speaks to the students, the students being ineligible. For Robinson, there is a clear bias against Jamaica College. Inconsistent. It is unfair. It is wrong. It's against natural justice. Even the setup of it is against natural justice. And lastly, it is against Jamaica College deliberately. But for Wellington? Again, I, I can speak very strongly for myself as well as our executive. We will apply the rule in all instances across the board as we see, as, as, as it is presented to us. Um, JC has made a point of pointing out that there are instances where there may be um, breaches that we have not applied the punishment. So we, if we are not aware or it's not brought to our attention, then we can apply the sanction. Jordan Ford, TVJ Sports.